This is going to be another low level down with the bits and bytes and some assembly language videos. If these ones don't attract you, feel free to skip it. But if you like to take your knowledge beyond just the bare bones basics, uh, keep watching. All right, let's do this. I'm going to make a class. I'm going to call it me ugly class. Yep. And then down here, let's say public char me char one public int me int and then down here another char me char two like so and then down here let's instantiate one of these me ugly class m u g me ugly class or mug that's kind of appropriate new me ugly class and then down here we'll say mug your char one we need a good char or car it depends on where you come from how you pronounce that but me car one uh, let's do my first initial J, and then mug dot me int. We need to do uh, let's do let's do my age 25, and then mug. Okay, I'm lying about my age. Mug dot me char two. Let's do my last initial K for king. All right, it seems like I've just uh, named myself a dog. That's probably not a good. Maybe I should redo this video. Yeah. No, I'll keep going. Um, JK, aren't those cool initials, Jamie King? Or if I call people, the caller ID usually says King Jamie. I like that. Uh, let me draw what I've drawn in several videos before the stack and the heap. And again, this is a class. All right, I scrolled up a little bit too far. Scrolled down a little bit far. There we go. It's a class. All right, here is our stack. Here is our heap. And mug is a reference to an object down on the heap so that's mug referencing an object and we'll just put our object right here and we've learned from the last video that each object has a sync block index sbo or maybe i should say ws for wasted space they each have a type object pointer and in the case of our ugly class here we have char1 i'll just say c1 Right there, we have me int, so m i right there, and then we have uh, me char two, so I'll just say char two right there. And I, you would think the way I've described all these types and such as I've drawn them, this is exactly what would happen. Isn't this what you would expect? This is how I've demonstrated it in previous videos, but I just want to prove to you that this is either the case or not the case and maybe we can learn something from it. I want to actually go to RAM and look at an instance of one of these and watch the data change to the values that we've set and and just prove that this is the case. Let's let's uh, let's take that off the screen for now. Hit F11. Again all the scary stuff. I'm going to come over here. F10, F10. I know EAX has the value of mug out there so let me 0x control V and here is our mug this looks like a type object pointer this looks like a sync block index so I'll grab the blue here and at least grab that much then we know these bits or bytes down here uh, are is our char and our int and our char and you'd probably expect expect maybe the char char one would take up these two two bytes because a char the size of a char is two bytes then the int would kind of be this portion right here taking up those bytes and then we'd have char two right there because that's the order in which we've declared them there in the class so let's just kind of go with that I'm going to say me char one gets J I think we're done with the registers I even think we're done with the disassembly window so watch something out here is going to change to a J pay attention I'm not sure whether Visual Studio will set it to red F10 holy smokes look at that 6a right here which is the value for a j right this is a hexadecimal value that's the j in unicode slash ascii if you would uh... that that's not what i expect i expected me int me int is this middle four bytes is it not what's going on here let's let's do the twenty five here watch what happens twenty five whoa nineteen right the nineteen in hex is a twenty five in decimal that's sixteen plus nine makes 25 so that's why I know that anyway um wait me ints here and me ints four bytes so that means it would probably be these four bytes well, now, I don't know, let's hit F10 again and see what happens with the K whoa our K is right there whoa what's going on here what's going on here any idea pause the video think about it I'll tell you what's going on this is called packing
Alright, even though I've declared a char and an int and a char, one, one thing to know about data types is that they're easily, most easily read on byte boundaries that are equivalent to their size. Wow, that sounds pretty technical. Let me try to explain that. A char in .NET is two bytes wide. That means every char takes up two bytes. So here is two bytes, and here's another two bytes. This, these are our two chars, and they are lined up on two byte boundaries or addresses. They will be on even addresses. You can see this address ends with a four, which is an even number, and so this is four and five, and then, and then we have six and seven right here, and then this is eight. You can see eight like so. So every char is lined up on two byte boundaries. They're, that's just optimal the way the Intel architecture is. It's fastest to read a data type as long as it's aligned to a, an address that lines up on its size. Okay, so in the case of a char, the addresses will be modulus two. Right? And we're seeing that right here. Now an int, an int is 32 bits or four bytes. So an int is most easily read, fastest read, most optimally read speed-wise at four byte boundaries or modulus four byte addresses. So an int is best read here, that's four bytes, or here, that's four bytes, or here, or here, or here. They're fastest read that way. But an int is not fastest read over this boundary here because this address does not start at a modulus four. All right, this one does, but this one does not. So how I've actually drawn this is incorrect. An instance of me ugly class, here is the int portion. Then the runtime is smart enough to say, well, here's the next char, we'll put it right there and align it on, on that byte boundary, and we'll put the other char, we'll put it right there. So now we have a nice packed data type, like so. If .NET actually laid the data members out explicitly how I've done it right here, then what we would actually get, let me do this in red. I'll do this in a nice thick red or medium red. But me char would be right here. That's a nice mod 2 address for a char. And then me int would have to be right here because we want a mod 4 address for me int. And then the next char would be down here. Okay? And then furthermore, the alignment for the actual type me ugly class is the alignment of its widest data member, which in this case is me int. So then an instance of me ugly class would actually take up all of this room. All right. We use the sync block index, which is kind of wasted, as I've said in previous videos. We have the type object pointer. That's good. We have char1 right here. We'd have me int right there. And then we'd have me char2 right there. So if I kind of fill this in a little bit, let me go nice and wide, thick nice and wide. If I fill that in, do you see any wasted memory in an instance of our me ugly class? All right, let me just fill it in nice and thick. Do you see any wasted memory at all? I do. I hope that's quite apparent. The stuff I've highlighted in green is used stuff, because stuff that's good, but then now every time I instantiate a me ugly class, I have essentially wasted this and this, I've wasted four bytes, like so. Well, .NET smart and says, you know what, if I put this char, at least lay it out so it's right next to that char, I can pack them tightly, and then they're on two-byte alignment, and then me int will also be on a four-byte alignment, and we'll have a nice, happy family, and we won't take up as much room, which is the case uh, right here. What actually happens, as we've seen, is here's the sync block index, here's the type object pointer, here's the int right here, and then here's our two characters. Let me fill in everything that's used, and hopefully you realize I'm going to fill it all in, and nothing is wasted. So, that if you ever hear people talk about packing and alignment, that's what they're doing. We have to align a value of a data type, for example, char, on its byte boundary addresses, so two byte boundaries. Same thing with the int. We have to align it on a four, but then we can also pack it more tightly like that. So, anyway, there you go. Alignment and packing and .NET.